Hello there, my name is Fernando and I'm a developer advocate here at GitLab and today I'm going to go over some of the newly introduced vulnerability data present in GitLab 17.9. This data includes the KEV, which stands for Known Exploited Vulnerabilities, the EPSS, which stands for Exploit Prediction Scoring System, and the CVSS, which stands for Common Vulnerability Scoring System. This data can be used to better prioritize and triage the vulnerabilities which should be remediated first. Now let's take a deeper dive and learn more about this data. First, there's CVSS, or the Common Vulnerability Scoring System, which is the foundation of vulnerability scoring. It provides a standardized method for rating the severity of security vulnerabilities. Each vulnerability is provided with a score ranging from 0 to 10, where higher values indicate greater severity. Then there's the KEV, or Known Exploited Vulnerabilities, which identifies vulnerabilities actively exploited in the wild. Unlike academic severity scores, KEV focuses on real-world threat intelligence. Then there's EPSS, or Exploit Prediction Scoring System, which uses machine learning to predict the likelihood a vulnerability will be exploited in the next 30 days. Scores range from 0 to 1, or 0 to 100%, representing probability. By combining these complementary frameworks, security teams can focus limited resources on the vulnerabilities that pose the greatest actual risk to their organization. In order to see this new vulnerability risk data, GitLab 17.9 is required along with a GitLab Ultimate subscription. This works on either SaaS or on-prem deployments. Dependency scanning and or container scanning must also be enabled within your project. And finally, there must be valid vulnerabilities detected within the default branch of the scanned project. Now let's see these new data types in action. In order to view this new vulnerability data, we must go to our .gitlabci.yaml. From here, we must enable dependency scanning. This can be done by simply adding the dependency scanning template, which will run within the test stage. Once the scanner runs completely on the default branch, we can go to the vulnerability report. The vulnerability report shows results of successful scans on your project's default branch. Now I'll group the vulnerabilities by tool. That way I can just see those that were detected by dependency scanning. Once I expand the tab, I'm provided with details on the vulnerability, such as when it was detected, its status, severity, description, identifier, tool that was used, as well as if any activity has been performed. Under the severity column, we can gloss over and see the CVSS, EPSS, and KEV values for the vulnerabilities in the list. If I select the vulnerability, I'm taken to its vulnerability page, which provides me detailed vulnerability insights, which help us remediate the vulnerability faster. In GitLab 17.9, you can also see the EPSS, KEV, and CVSS data for vulnerability risk prioritization, allowing us to figure out which vulnerability we should address first. And there you have it, the new vulnerability data present in GitLab 17.9. To learn more about GitLab and its security and compliance features, see the links in the description. And make sure to click on that subscribe button 